I'd love to ask Brian's view. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. It's good to be talking with you again, Bill, and to hear your reading, Wade, because certainly both Wade and I have had parallel pathways of discovery, of stepping outside of the box of mainstream thinking. And it's taken quite a while, and it can be a very painful process. And it's a process that the general public now is, I think, beginning to awaken to. In answer to your question, Bill, imagine a world where we have these, say, little 10-kilowatt power packs that you can put in your circuit breaker box or under the hood of your car. The world would change overnight. Uh, let's say we made two or three billion of these. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily advocate doing this under the system we now have. And that, of course, then begs the question of political and economic control and some of the reasons why this technology has been so suppressed. And believe me, Wade and I have personally had many, many experiences around that since our own awareness became more pronounced. And so what I see happening is that this new world, as long as the governments of the world and the corporations of the world change systemically, and that's been my plea. Gosh, on my website, I just posted a letter to Obama. It was an open appeal, basically, to please address the systemic changes we need so that we can usher in some of these new technologies in a very benign way, that we can do things differently, that we, we don't want Dick Cheney running this one too, nor do we want the current U.S. government, such as it is, to be running this one. And obviously, these technologies are a big threat to vested interests, whether you're a scientist, and we know that the whole history of science is just riddled with denial of new developments whether it was during the Copernican Revolution, the time of Kepler, Galileo, the Wright brothers, their initial flight, uh, the uh, reporter that reported it was fired from his position and Scientific American about a year later ran an editorial, scathing editorial, denying that aviation ever existed because it wasn't reported. Historically, we can look at the structure of scientific revolutions Thomas Kuhn's book, and I know Wade is just acutely aware of this. We've both been studying this kind of thing. Free energy is sometimes a funny word. Maybe we could use the word solution energy. Uh, these represent quantum leap breakthroughs from what we now know that's going way beyond uh, solar and wind uh, in, in terms of cleanliness. It's actually... Um, uh, it, it's sort of analogous to the information age. Uh, who would have ever imagined that computers and the Internet would have existed even uh, 20 years ago? Uh, it was only a small number of people who, who foresaw that. And what I foresee, along with many colleagues who've been suppressed, is that we can have a free energy or a solution energy culture in the world. And by solution energy, I mean... Uh, vacuum energy, energy from the vacuum of space, which is well known to the yogis, that, that everywhere has enormous amounts of potential energy, if we can only tap into it. And there are ways of tapping into it. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>